Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday at 10 o'clock. And you know what that time means? It means it's Para Schoology walkthrough webinar time. Uh, so we're going to get started here today. The uh, first thing that I want to uh, look at is letter A on this image. There is a purple number one and a purple number two. Those are showing in this meeting that there is a web camera and a microphone icon. And it's a good idea to keep both muted during the webinar. So that means just click on those to turn them off. And if you have them off, they'll have that slash mark uh, through them. I am going to do question and answer throughout the webinar today. So when I have those opportunities to ask questions, go ahead and unmute the mic at that time and ask your questions and we can have that dialogue. Um, but I'll introduce those points within the webinar today. Also, you see an orange number three. The orange number three is, it's almost like a comic book talking icon. If you click on it, it opens up a meeting chat off to the right hand side. Sometimes our attendees uh, don't see that icon for the meeting chat. If you can try to enlarge Microsoft Teams, sometimes it shows up in that toolbar. Or another workaround is just closing out of Teams and rejoining and uh, starting it up again. Uh, sometimes has that appear. So speaking of the meeting chat, if you click on the meeting chat icon, uh, letter B is showing off to the right hand side is the meeting chat. And I am going to put in a link here right now. Let me type that out. And this link will be uh, the way that you can record attendance for today's webinar, but also will be a way for me to collect uh, your name and email address so I can email out uh, resources and videos and a copy of the webinar presentation that you're seeing for a follow up email. So here it is. So in the meeting chat, there is a link now. Uh, go ahead and click on that link and go ahead and fill out that form, just asking your name, email address, and then I can have that good list. So I'll give you a moment to do that. So it looks like uh, you're coming through. About half of you have uh, submitted your response to the form. Uh, so remember that's in the meeting chat. Yes, hi. So that is going to be in the meeting chat. And let me, I'll put the link in there again. There we go. 
So uh, on your okay. toolbar, if you, you got it now? Cool. Yeah. And I'll put this link back up towards the end of the webinar as well. Uh, so you'll have a chance to fill it out then. I think I'm going to get started uh, with the slideshow here as you're completing it. So today we're going to have the webinar. It's from 10 to 11 today, and I'm going to do a walkthrough on Paris using Schoology. And I'm going to do it through the slideshow that you're going to see a little showcase of the steps. Then I'm going to go live and you're going to see me actually do it live within Schoology, the steps that we're going to see here together. Um, throughout the slideshow, I have opportunities for question and answer periods. Um, and then we I am still here. I'll be here in the same webinar from 11 to 12. So an hour together, we're going to look at this and then from 11 to 12 is you trying it on your own. You actually doing those steps, uh, coming back in here to ask questions as you're doing it. So I'm a guide on the side actually as you actually do th some of these things uh, yourselves as well. Um, my name is Matthew Ketchum, your neighborhood friendly technology coach, and I'm really glad that you joined us. It looks like we have a lot of K6. Uh, Pear is here with us today, uh, so really excited to have you all and uh, you all wanting to help out the teachers and students and uh, being that support. So that's uh, that's very uh, great and incredible. So I'm hoping to help you with that. So this is our agenda for today. So we're going to one look at how to log into Schoology as a para. Two, we're going to see how can you make a Schoology course? How can you have your own course? Three, how to add the students to that course that you have. And four, how to host a meeting in Schoology conferences. So we're going to look at those four main things today. And again, you're going to get a copy of this slideshow and a follow up email. When you see this slide, uh, the Q&A, that's when I'll have opportunities to do question and answers. And that's where you can put your questions in the chat. You can also at those moments unmute your microphone and ask your questions. All right, we're going to get started. The first thing is how to log into Schoology. So as paras, your accounts have been created, I believe by Alma. And you might have got an email from Alma stating that your account was created. She usually lets you know you have to log in with the Schoology.com website. So you don't log in to the same website teachers or students do. They do like a MCSK8.Schoology.com website. But as paras, you're going to be logging into Schoology.com itself. You have a username and password um, that was created for you. And Alma creates it such a way that you can sign in to Schoology.com and you'll be part of the school site that you're uh, para at, which is pretty neat on that side. So pretty much what you do with that info is we suggest that you're on the Chrome web browser to be on the Internet. 
So there's different web browsers, you know, there's the Blue E Internet Explorer, uh, but we recommend uh, this one. It's the green, yellow, red ball with the blue dot. Uh, so Chrome Web Browser is the best one that works with all of our tools. So on the Chrome Web Browser, uh, you're going to go at the very top where you type web addresses. You would go to Schoology.com. And when you're at Schoology.com, you'll have a login at the top that you'll click on. And you'll just put in that username and password that Alma had created for you to log in. All right, any questions with just logging in? And feel free to unmute your mic at this time or put it in the chat. I have a question. Yes. Um, I downloaded the app on my phone. Is that OK? And did, were you able to log in? Yeah, I was able to log in and everything. OK, that's OK. You're definitely going to be limited to a lot of things I show you today in that. So okay. the Schoology app is a great place to check in on students work submitted. But a lot of the things we need to create you'll be limited as a para-teacher kind of role in the app. Okay, so then just to do the site? Yeah, if you can if you can go to the actual uh, Schoology website. Okay. Thank good you. question. Yeah, good question. I have a question Hi, for you I all. Have, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I have a question. If yeah. you're certificated as opposed to a para, can you use the mcsk8schoology.com or do you still need to go through just schoology.com? Yeah, so if you um, have power school attendance and grade book, then you can use the district schoology website. So as you mentioned for K8, that's mcsk8.schoology.com. And then for our secondary, that's just mcs.schoology.com. But you only can log in that way if you have a power school attendance and grade book that you have with students. Otherwise, you will have to log in with Schoology.com. OK, great. Thank you. I do not have a uh, power school because I'm a coach, so I'll okay. go through the Schoology.com. Thank you. Yeah, and I would recommend if you haven't gone through Alma to get your Schoology.com account created, that's probably going to be the best way because she can create it in such a way you can still log into Schoology.com, but be part of a uh, the school site. OK, so do I just need to send her a message and let her know? Because I did get the message that says um, from our other coach at the site that said, here's your login, et cetera. And I thought it was kind of interesting because I thought, well, I thought I already had a login. So now that makes sense why she sent me that. I can just let her know that I'm also certificated so she could put me on the other one. Yeah, yeah. So you you're right behind the scenes. I think getting ready for today, they a lot of sites were getting the accounts created through Alma. Um, so if you recently got a message that you have an account created, you might try that one and see what that login looks like. But if you're not, when you log in, you're not part of a school site. At the top, you'll see in a moment it's themed for your school site when you log in. Um, if that's not happening, then yeah, just email Alma and her emails right here, and I'll put that in the follow-up email as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. Other questions with uh, signing up? Or logging in. All right, so then the next thing I want to show you is how to make a Schoology course. So once you logged into Schoology, you can create your own course. Uh, the reason for that is uh, when you log into Schoology.com, you don't have any courses or students automatically. Um, that only happens for teachers that have that power school grade book and attendance. That part is all created for those teachers, those courses, and their students automatically in there. But how we're going in, just Schoology.com, you'll actually have to create the course and get your, the students in that course. So let me show you how to create the course. So the first thing that you would do is once you log into Schoology, in step one, you'll click courses at the very top. Then step two, You'll click My Courses towards the right side. Then step three, you'll see kind of on the right side where this image is, there will be a button that says Create a Course. Once you do that, 
then this will appear. So this is the create course screen. So I'll just walk through the steps here. Step four, you'll put in your course name. You can create that course name. So I just put in a sample one in here, but you can create the course name however you would like to have the name. Uh, whatever that name is, it's going to be really good that the students know the name of the course uh, because that's the one they're going to have to try to find when they get into Schoology. So the name does mean something because that's what the students will see what class to click on. Step five is the sections already there, so you can leave it with the section one. Step six, you will have to choose a subject area. You may choose other. Step seven, you will have to choose a grade level and you may pick a grade level or you can select none. And then step eight, you will have to choose a grading period. So um, it looks like a lot of us in here are from elementary K6. So you might want to choose that trimester three. So you just check the box for trimester three. And then step nine, you click create. All right, any questions with just creating a course in Schoology? I have a question. So if we're teaching four groups per day, do you have to create a new course for each different group? Yeah, that's a good question. You may create one course and you may, when we get into this course, you can have folders in Schoology for different groups inside this one course. And you can schedule out conferences, you know, with group A is at 10 a.m., group B is at 10.30 or 11 o'clock and so on. So you can, you can use this one course in many ways. Uh, but if you feel more comfortable, you know what, I just want students that I'm working with in this group are the only ones in that particular course, then you may create as many courses as you want as well. I think it might be a little bit easier to manage one course, uh, but you are open to create different courses, as many as you want. It's just the next step after this, I'll show you is how to get the students in there. But in the okay, one course, you. you could organize it for like group A folder and work, group B folder and work. Yeah, good questions. I have a question. Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, do you want us to actually be doing creating the course as you're saying this, or is it just you're just showing us how to do it right now? Yeah, great question. So right now I'm just doing a little show and tell okay. uh, with the slide deck, and then I'm going to go live and we'll do it live. I'll show you me walking through the steps live so you get another view of those steps. Um, then I'm going to email you all out the copy of this presentation. And from 11 to 12, that's when you all are going in and trying it yourselves. And I'll still be here in this webinar to help you with any questions that you have during that time. OK, it's because yesterday I did it and I created one, so I don't know if I'm supposed to create another one because it's I did like a pretend one following the instructions that it gave us. OK. So that's why I was just wondering. Yeah, so you're more than welcome to use what you already have if it kind of looks like, hey, I did the same steps that I'm seeing here today. Or if you're like, well, I haven't really done much with that course yet, you know, maybe I will start, you know, new with these steps. That's okay too. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, sorry, I have another question. So um, you said that it's best used with Chrome. I have uh, Apple computers at home. If I can, if but I can, I believe I can use okay. Chrome as my as my internet. Can I do it through that if I don't use my Surface Pro? Yeah, I am actually uh, on an Apple computer right now on my personal computer at home, and you'll see me go live. I'm in Chrome on my Apple computer. So the neat thing about being on Chrome web browser, it's just universal. No matter if the students on that Chromebook. Uh, teachers are on their Windows 10 Surface Pro. If you're on your personal device, uh, no matter if it's Windows or Apple, as long as you're in Chrome, it's universal at that point. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, very good question.
All right, so the next thing I want to show you, you got your course created. So how do you add the students to the course? And there's two different pathways I'm going to show you. One pathway is the students just join it. So it, all the work is on the student side or parents with students to join into the course. The second pathway I'm going to show you is where you as paras and and the teacher can work together to add students manually to the course. So there's two different ways you could do this. So let's look at the first way. So the first way is the teacher or para, um, once you create a Schoology course, in the bottom left corner of that course is a green box that has an access code. So you could share that access code to parents and students to join the course. So what students would do with that access code is when they go to Schoology, they'll click courses at the top. Uh, step two, they'll click my courses on the right side. Step three on the right side, they'll click join a course. Then step four, that's where they're going to put in that access code that you shared out. In step five, they join it. So this first pathway is pretty much just the para or the teacher would share out that access code to the course that was created. And then all the work in, is done by that parent students. Uh, when the student logs into Schoology. Again, students just click courses. Step two, my courses. Three, they'll click join a course and put in the access code. As you see in step four and join it, step five. Um, so that's one way. The other way is manual adding to the students. So this way, the teacher or parent can try to add the students to the course themselves. So how this works is in the Schoology course you create, step one, you would click members on the left hand side. Step two, you would click add members. Then step three, you just want to make sure you're at your school site that you're at. The school site name is there. Sometimes there's a little drop down arrow to choose the school site. Step four, you can search for the student by their name. And then step five, you would click on the student name on the list that you see there. And you can you can do this as many times as you want. Search for a student, click the student like in step five. So step four and step five can be you can keep doing that. Um, and then step six, when you're ready to add that student or all the students you have clicked on, step six, you add them. Uh, so you click add members and they're in the course. So now when the student just goes to Schoology, they just click courses and they'll see the course uh, to click on. Uh, they're automatically in it. So those are two different pathways. Any questions on how students get into your course? Um, I don't have a question on that quite yet. I have a question because um, some of my co-paras are um, stuck and cannot actually see the slides that you're showing. Okay. Um, they are just stuck on the screen where it kind of shows the members that are in the group right now. And so they can't even see what you're actually doing. Okay. Uh, members in the group. So they're, like that must be like a participant list. Maybe yeah, it they just see? shows the participant list that they see. And they're, see. they're really lost because they don't see any slides. Got it. So a couple things I'll definitely in an email share out the slides and this is being recorded as well. So the the webinar recording will will be shared. But right now a workaround could be um, you could close out of teams and then rejoin the meeting and see if you can see the slides. OK, thank you. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I apologize for that. Um, I wanted to say something. Sure. <laughs> um, are they're on their phones. I'm on my phone too, and I'm actually having to scroll myself to look at the slides. Oh, and that's I'm a good doing point. Doing it automatically. So if they're on their phone, I'm having to scroll myself following along. 
Hey, yeah, that, thank you I'm, for that tip. Well. Yeah, so if you're on the phone, that's a good tip. On the phone, it looks like the slide deck, you can actually go through the slides yourself. I'm on slide 19 right now, um, and I can be mindful to tell you what slide I'm on, if that helps. Or I can just say next slide. Do you get to see the slide numbers at all? Yes, on my phone, yeah. I could see it. Yes, on my tablet, yeah. Okay, so if I kind of let you know what slide number I'm on, that might help. I think uh, if you're on a different slide, it's, there's a like a, a button that says to presenter. If you click that button that says to presenter, it like follows through with the, the teacher, the guide. Oh, thank you for that tip. So it looks like on that same slide selector, it might be where you can catch up to where the presenter's at. Yeah. Yeah, so if you click that one, it'll just pop up wherever you're at. Okay, that's cool. I think you're my most advanced group doing it through mobile devices. <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning a lot of good tips from y'all. We weren't given computers. I know, that's true, and I do, I do kind of... I, I feel y'all all out on this. Um, so I know we always advocate, um, but you know, continue discussions on that. Uh, so yeah, you're right. So I definitely need to be aware that you're all on personal devices uh, doing all of this. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you before I go live is the last step here is how to host a meeting in Schoology conferences. So Schoology conferences is the approved video conferencing uh, tool that we have. It's built right within your Schoology course. Uh, the really neat thing is uh, teachers and paras in their course can schedule out these conferences. Students can join them. Uh, and the teacher para has a lot of admin rights to the video conference. So you can mute all of the students. Um, only the teacher para can see a student if the student has a web camera on. Students can't see each other for uh, privacy of minors. Um, there is a virtual whiteboard that I'll show you. You can share a YouTube video to watch it all together. Uh, there's even a public chat that you can uh, chat in. Uh, Schoology conferences also lets you record that meeting if you want to. You don't have to uh, in case uh, some students weren't able to uh, meet up live with you. They can see a recording of it. Uh, but a lot of things you can do with this conference is it's the tool that we have to do a live video conference instruction with students or meeting with students in live through distance learning. So how this works is called conferences. It's in the Schoology course. So I'm on slide number 21. And on slide 21, it's showing the Schoology course. On the left-hand side is conferences button that you click on. And then step two, you click on create new conference and that's how you start to schedule these. I'm on slide 22 now. And on this screen, once you create a new conference, you have to uh, create the conference. So you'll put in step three, a conference name, what you wanna call it. You'll put in a start time as you see in step four. So that's the date in step four. Step five is the start time. You may add an end time. It's up to you. That kind of gives the person joining in, the student joining in, how long this will be. So the end time is okay to put in as well. Just know this start date, the start time and the end time is just text information for someone just to see when this thing will happen. It's not when the conferences doesn't automatically turn on and turn off by this start time and end time. Um, so conferences is just going to be started by you, the teacher para, whenever you press the start button and I'll show you. Uh, so just know this info right here is just text info. Just someone who comes to conferences can say, hey, on Thursday at 10 a.m. there's going to be a conference meeting that I can join in on. Um, Matthew, so, may I make yes. a comment about that? Yes, please. Um, I know that some of the, the students um, have 
like East Coast time on their Schoology accounts and they haven't been changed. And some teachers have been experiencing kids who aren't coming into the conference on time because of those discrepancies. Do you think it might be a good idea in that situation just to leave the time off and to leave just like make us communicate what time so that we all know that we're talking about our time zone? Yeah, that's a great point that you you share there. So we, I definitely will share with you in the follow-up email. We do have a video for how students can change the time zone um, that you can share out too. So we're really recommending that you know the teachers, paras, uh, students, you know, make sure their time zone is set to Pacific. So I think that's the best. The only thing that happens if if the time zone is not set correctly. So you're correct. This conference time will show up different. It will show at Eastern time, which is three hours ahead. <laughs> so they might try to join at 7 a.m. instead of 10 a.m. But anything that you put in Schoology course two, if you had a deadline date um, or a time of anything else you put in Schoology will also be off by three hours. So we're kind of recommending in elementary that um, everyone check their time zone and change it to Pacific just so everything's synced up. What happened was when school started this school year, um, all of the elementary K-6 uh, was created, was pushed out from the admin side. And then it was realized that that push out had the Eastern time in it. And so then they changed it to Pacific, pushed it out again. On the admin side, it shows all elementary students and teachers with Pacific. But what happened, that second push out never really did change it because of the initial uh, beginning of school year. So they're definitely going to be more mindful next school year when they open up K-6 accounts and make sure they double check the time zone. Um, but unfortunately, that leaves it right now Eastern time zone for uh, even some teachers, uh, most students. Um, so we definitely have a video how students can change the time zone. And it's the same process a teacher, student, or para just to check their time zone. So I'll, I'll definitely share that in the follow up email, but that's good to be mindful of. I think your comment is you're correct. A lot of students, they're on the Eastern time zone behind the scenes in Schoology. And so your 10 o'clock as Pacific time will show up, you know, differently. It will show up 7 a.m. <laughs> on the student side, they think when it's going to start. So I think being mindful, I think you're correct. I think one is getting everyone to kind of do that initial step change the time zone but second being mindful i like your idea is you don't have to list a start time either you can just put the start date and communicate you know the start time you know a little different you can even put in the conference name you could put the conference name won't change on the student so you could put thursday 10 a.m um conference meetup so even then the conference name in step three you could put the time up there that won't change that's not linked to any time zone that conference name text box uh, but good ideas for a little workarounds at this point other questions matthew i have a question yes how do i get from because i'm still on the join course screen how do I get from that screen to the screen that you're on right now so where I can see um, the conference and all that so I hear you so you're in our meeting right I'm in your meeting on my phone but I'm on my laptop um, on Schoology so I'm kind of going you know trying to do what you're doing on your screen but how do I get I'm still um, I'm still on the courses tab and I'm trying to find where I can see materials, updates, grade setup, badges, conference, all that. I'm trying to find that menu. OK, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to walk through this show and tell slide deck. OK, um, and we'll just have a look at it right now. Just a show and tell. Then I'm going to go live and try out the steps. And then after that, I'll give you all opportunities to try it out on your own and ask questions as you do it. OK, does that sound all right? Yeah, that's fine. OK. Um, so once once you create your conference name and date and times, then it looks like this. So when you're ready to start this thing, 
so teacher, para, or the student goes to the Schoology course at that day and time. You click conferences on the left hand side as you see the purple box. Then the red box is what the teacher or para clicks on to start a conference because you're the owners of the course. Uh, you're the only ones that can start the conference. So you'll click start conference button to actually get started. Students, when they come in here, they can click where you see the title of the conference. That green arrow is pointing to. That's where students click to join the conference. They don't get a start button. They just click on the title of the conference on that date and time to join in. That title will not let them join if the teacher or para has not started it yet. Um, so only when the para teacher starts the conference can a student actually click the title here of the conference title and then they can join in. And I'll show you this in a moment too when I go live. This is a really good website. So Schoology Conferences is created by another company for Schoology. That company is called Big Blue Button and they make these conference video uh, tools for companies. Well, they have a really neat website, test.bigbluebutton.org. And you can actually go there and you can simulate an experience of being in Schoology conferences. It's it, it's everything that that Schoology conference is, but it's in a simulated experience to just try out click on tools. It won't interfere with your Schoology course or anything. Helps you kind of get more familiar with what a conference looks like. Um, and I'll show you that today too. But I thought that was a really neat uh, playground that you can go to, a little sandbox area that you can play in. Uh, not have to worry about if it's going to mess up your Schoology course or conferences. All right, questions about Schoology conferences. Hi, I have a question. Um, so we were um, given the direction that we were going to be doing um, kind of like a live uh, teaching with these conferences. Is it kind of the same thing whether you do it live or you record it? and then put it up for the kids to join it or with conferences, it's like a live meeting kind of like we're having right now. Yeah, great question. So uh, conferences is a live meeting, very similar to what you're doing right now with me. It does have the ability to record, so you may record it as well. And then those students who aren't able to make that meeting can look at, can play a recording. And that recording is right within conferences as well, which is kind of neat. So when a student clicks conferences on the left side of a course, um, you can see in the screen that in the middle it has active completed towards the top. Completed conferences and videos show up under that completed button. And then there'll be a play button to watch that video. Uh, if if you chose to record it. OK, yeah, I thought I read um, when I went over the, the courses yesterday, I thought I read that it said that if you don't choose to record it, it will be available for seven days or something like that. Is that correct? Yeah, you do need to record it for that seven days. Uh, so okay. if you if you choose not to record, there is no recording, but you're correct. If you do choose to record, that play button will have it for seven days for a week. OK, and then I had another question back to when um, I asked the question about whether you have to do a course set up for each of the four groups or and you answered you could do one course and just use a different folder for each group. Now, my question is, it, so when you let's say I want to um, I do my meetup for my first group and I only did one course folder, can all the students, let's say I have, you know, 30 students total, but there's only 10 in that one group. Can all 30 of them watch it or just the 10 for that folder? Yeah, so let's, I think you have a good question. If you create one course and you're mm -hmm. having all the students in there, you, you could create different folders, you know, like group one, group two, group three, and put materials in there. Uh, you can also assign a folder to just 10 students and they're the only ones who see those items. Outside of that part, if you have just one course, conferences is available to any student in the course. 
So let's say you labeled your conference title, you know, group one is meeting at 10, group two will meet at 11, and so on. You have those different listings. Um, you know, share out to those 10 students, hey, we're meeting at this time in conferences. It will be the only one they could click on because that's the only one you start up at that time. But it is possible other students in that course could click on it and join. You will see in a moment, I'll show you live, you will see a list of students who are in the conference with you. And you might just say, oh, Matthew, um, you accidentally joined us at the 10 o'clock. I'm going to meet with the group two at 11. Um, I'm going to, is all right if I dismiss you now and you come back at 11 to join in? Uh, so you can manage your 10 students in the conferences. You'll see who's in it. So if you okay. do one course, it is possible that any student can get in a conference. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. Um, also, what I'm going to share out with you in the follow up email is we do have a, a YouTube channel. It's kind of a funny name. It's called Instructional Tech, Instructional Tech. Uh, but I'll share with you how to get to the YouTube channel in our follow up email. But on there, there's really great videos. There's how to use Schoology. Um, there's videos for teachers and paras, how to use Schoology conferences. There's videos for the students. How do they use conferences? How do they use Schoology? Uh, so there's a lot of good tutorial videos that we have on this page that we're continuing to add to and create. So I'll share that out with you all too. And we're going to get ready, set, going live. So I'm going to go live. I'll go over the different things that we saw, how to create a course, how to add students, how to start conferences, and I'll show you a little bit in conferences in the live view, what that looks like. Um, and so I'm going to take off my slide deck here, and then I'm going to share my computer screen. All right, so here I am on the computer screen. And what you're going to see is to log in, you will want to go to Schoology.com. And when you're at Schoology.com, you're just going to click login in the top right. And you're going to log in with that username and password that you were given. And then once you log in, uh, you'll see this. You'll see courses at the very top. And then on the right hand side, you'll be able to click my courses. Oop, let me log in again. Timed me out. Here we go. So again, you'll click courses at the top. And then on the right hand side, you'll click my courses. And then on the right hand side, you'll create the course. And this is where you give it the course title. And you can give the title whatever you like. The section you'll leave, subject area. You can choose other. Grade level. You can choose none if you would like. And in the grading period, you'll have to scroll all the way down at the bottom of this box. And that's where you're going to see trimester three to check that and click create. And it's a good idea to remember what you named it because that's what students will uh, need to know the name of it when they click courses at the top. What's the name of the course to click on? Now, how to get students in? A couple ways is the first way you could just share out this access code here in the bottom left in the green box. And if you do share that out, you know, the teacher can help you share that out to the parents uh, for students to join it. So pretty much what students would do with that, they click courses, my courses, and they'll click join a course, and they'll put that access code in it. And then they're in that course, uh, which is kind of cool. 
The other way you can do this is on the left hand side in your course that you created, you can click members. And at the very top, you can click add members. And you just want to make sure you choose the right school site. It probably is going to be set for you already, but if not, you can use a little drop down arrow to choose your school site. And here you can start to look up students names. Uh, you can search for them or you can look on the list here. You click on a student and you may click as many as you like. And when you have students that you want to add to the course, click add members. And you can do this as many times as you want. Click add members, do that again, click a couple more, add members until you get your full student list that you want in here. You can even share that access code out to the teacher if you wanted. Uh, when the teacher joins, you'll see their name on the members list as well. And to give someone admin rights to the course, like a teacher or another para, you would just click the gear next to their name and it will say make them admin. And you can give them the little admin badge as you see I have here uh, so they can do things just like you can in the course. Um, students you don't give the admin rights to, uh, just another teacher, another para who's in the course. All right, so now let's see here. To do a Schoology conference, to do like a conference with your students, on the left hand side, you click conferences. And you have to create one of these, so you click create new conference. And you give it a title. And I like the feedback I was given, so Thursday group one meet at 10 AM. So even if you put in that title in here, um, you can even give the date. But if you put the time in here, that that will be consistent for everyone to see. So we'll put the date here. And then I can just create so you don't I don't think you have to add a time. Let's see. Nope, you don't have to. Oh, it puts as 12 AM. So you probably do want a time in there. So I can click the gear here, click edit. And I, I can give it a time. So it does look like it does need a time in here. Um, but at least your title will have it here as well. All right, so now it's that day and time and you come to your Schoology course. Everyone clicks conferences on the left side. Students, teachers, paras, you all click conferences on the left side. And then only the admin of the course can click the start button on that date and time. So I'll do that. Just remember students would join in with this link. You know, I created the, I started it. So students would now be able to see this link and click on it to join in. So this is what conferences does for everyone who comes into it. Wants to know how do you want to join? I, I want to talk as the para. I want students to hear me. So I need to use my microphone. So I click microphone and I need to allow it. And it's going to do a little test for me. Make sure I can hear myself and I can. So I click yes. And this is this is a Schoology conference. So I'll give you a tour here. On the left hand side, any shape that's a square is presenter. Uh, so that would be the teacher or paras would be when they log in. Any admin of the Schoology course would come in here as a square. All your students would be round circle icons. Um, it will have their name next to their symbol. You as the para teacher can click on that student's name and you can mute them if you wanted to mute their microphone. You can also use the gear right up here and you can mute everyone except you as the presenter. So that's some uh, tools that you have. You do have a public chat that's here in the middle that you can type in it, students can type in it. You can even put web links in here and students can click on those web links and go to those websites. So it's a pretty dynamic uh, chat box. Everything is recorded. So in the top, you as the teacher of para can click the three dots here at the top 
And you can save a copy of this public chat if you would like for documentation. Uh, a couple other things you have is at the very top, you have a start recording button. So anytime, it's up to you, it's optional, but you can record this whole session as a video. You click start recording, you say yes, and you'll see that it has a red dot. That means things are being recorded. At any moment, you can click up here to pause it, and it's paused. You can resume the recording at any time as well. When you want to stop it, pausing it also stops the recording. When you want to leave and the meeting, if you click the three dots up here in the top right, you would end the meeting. You want to be very careful here. You don't want to log out. Log out means you left, but all the students are left in there uh, together. <laughs> so you do want to end the meeting uh, when you're all finished. When you end the meeting, it also stops the recording as well right here. Um, at the very bottom, you can mute your microphone. At the very bottom, you can turn on your web camera. All students would see you. So when you turn on the web camera, you show up here in the top center for all the students. Students can turn on and off their web cameras. You'll see all the students up here in the top center as well. Just know that you can see the students, but students can't see each other. You may turn that off for everyone as the owner of this conference. So to turn that off, if you don't want any students to be able to turn on web cameras, in this top three dots in the top right, there is a settings area. And on the left side where it says data savings, you have this option to turn off web cameras. So you can turn off any web cameras and save that. So that means you or the students can't turn on your web cameras. Uh, so it can be mindful of that setting. You do have this space right here. Uh, you can click the next slide and it's like a virtual whiteboard. Uh, they can see your hand moving on it and the red dot. You can click on the tools and you can change it to a pencil to draw and click on a T to type or a shape to draw. And you, you can work out things here and students will see it in live time. You can change the color and thickness. You can even say, hey, I want to undo what I just did. It takes it off. You can clear out the whiteboard with the trash can. And this last button, if you want to get students to write on the whiteboard with you, uh, you would click this one, this multi user whiteboard. Just know when you click it, all students have access to annotate, draw, type on the whiteboard all at the same time. Um, so you might say, you know, uh, you know, these three students. In the top left corner, you can draw a grid maybe where you want them to put their answers in it. A couple other neat things that you have in here in the bottom left is a plus sign. You can do a poll with your students. So if you click on that really quickly, you can send out a yes, no, true, false. They'll check for understanding. Uh, when you click the plus sign, you can share out a YouTube video. So when you click share video, just paste the YouTube web address of the video here and you can put that in. Also, you can share out your own PowerPoint or presentation or a PDF document. If you click upload a presentation, you can upload any files and then all the students will see it at the same time. So a couple of things that you can do in here. Just know that your students will show up here on the left hand side. You'll see all their student names. Again, you can click on the student You'll have an option to remove them from this menu. You'll have an option to mute them. You can also make them unmuted if you want them to talk. The other thing you're going to see here is students can click on their name and they can raise their hand. They can click an icon with their hand raised if they have a question and you will see that it will resort the student names here on the left side. The top student names will be the ones with their hands raised and you'll see an icon in their circle here with the hand icon. Um, so you can click on that, unmute them, have them ask their question at that moment. 
Um, and then when you when you do leave the conference, you just click the dots and make sure you end the meeting and say yes. And you get a little survey. And then when you close out of it, you want to also click end conference in Schoology to officially end it. And then what happens is under the completed button at the top, and it takes a while, but if you did record, right here will be a play button. And it does take a couple hours to process the video before it's able to be played here. So you give that some time, but you can come back here under completed and check the play button. Um, again, the one website um, that I, I'll share out with you is that test that big blue button. And this is kind of neat. If you just come here and put your name in and join in, this is a simulated experience of what we just saw, like a real conference that you can go in and play with the tools and it won't, you don't have to create a conference. You can just play in the same environment that we were just in. So that's kind of a neat website, uh, that test that big blue button. All right, questions so far that you might have, what you saw? I have a question. Yes. Um, so say you're working with a teacher. Um, is there a way to join her conference with the students? So say uh, she can, yeah, say share she that again. Say she creates a conference and she has the students on there and then she wants me as her para to join. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, so that teacher um, would need to share with you the access code to their course. So you would just ask the teacher, um, can you share me your access code? And it's in their course in the bottom left. And then you would just have to go to courses, my courses, join the course with the access code. And as long as the they let you join their course, that teacher, uh, they can click members and they can see all the members, including you, that you joined. And just being a member in the course means, yes, you can attend those conferences. Now, the teacher can also find your name, click the gear and make you an admin in the course with them. And that means you would have the admin rights in that conference as well. So if you just join the teacher's course, you would be like a student in the conferences. Um, but if that teacher makes you admin, then you would have those same rights that you saw me demonstrate in conferences. OK, thank you. Yeah, good question. I have a quick question. Yes. That. Um, so I'm looking on my my own and it looks like she already put me as her admin and I okay. click onto the conferences. Yeah. And then she already has a conference set up, so when it's the time to start, I would just click start conference. Right? Yeah, that, that might be a conversation with you or the teacher. The teacher oh. might be the one who wants to actually start it. Okay, so she starts it, and then if she starts it, can I join in? Yeah, you'll join in. Um, let me create one here again real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll join in. I just want to know if it was like a join button and when she starts the conference, I wouldn't have to start the conference, right? Right. So when you come here, you'll see that the teacher started it. You'll see it's in green. It will say status in progress in green. Uh -huh. You to get in would be just like a student where it says the oh, title okay. of it. That's how you would then jump into it. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Thank I you. have a question. Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, I have a student who doesn't speak English. I do speak his language, um, but I'm not sure how to help him um, to join Schoology. He hasn't been on it for maybe about a week or so. And so um, I did talk to the teacher and I told her that I would try my best to guide the student. Are there any um, YouTube videos that, that I'm able to get on just to get an idea of um, how Squology works on their tablet? Yeah, so I'm going to share with you that our YouTube video. And one area that we have is like a student 
video playlist that I'll share with you. But okay. we have a video of how students use conferences, how they use um, Schoology, but we also have them in Spanish. Oh, good. So I can share with you. I'll share with the whole group in a follow up email, the English and Spanish versions of these student videos. OK, sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Matthew, what are the settings you recommend if we're doing our um, like 20 minute lessons, holding a presentation book? Um, I was thinking maybe you could tell the group, you know, turn off cameras, just leave mics on. How would you arrange that? Yeah, would you want the students to see you though? Uh, yeah, because they have to see the book. I'm holding the okay. book and there's, yes. Yeah, let me let me do that here. Okay. Um, so in the conference, So, so the one nice thing about the Schoology conference it is really mindful of privacy of minors. Uh -huh. So it doesn't let students see each other, even if they turn on their web cameras. Um, and you can actually click on a student. Uh, you can only mute their microphone or unmute their microphone. You can't click a student to turn off on or off their web camera. Um, you can change the setting if you didn't want any student web cameras on in the three dots under settings data savings on the left side you can turn off but that also turns it off on your side too which is kind of goofy because you do it sounds like you want it on for you um so for just you to have the web camera on you would click share web camera at the bottom and then allow your web camera and then it's going to ask you hey everybody um, it's going to ask you what camera, you know, front or rear facing, and you'll start that. And then it shows up here in the middle for all students uh, right here. And then, uh, you know, you would have to kind of, as you can kind of see your account, you would have to kind of hold the book up a little bit so they could see it. And you can kind of show it a little bit and then take it down to read it and show the page again for them to okay. look at. Okay. So automatically their oh, their cameras are off. They are, they are, and they can turn on their web camera, uh, but it's only you to see it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. Hi, I have another question. So the, like Gail was saying, we have a presentation book that the kids have to be able to read. So how close to the our camera do you think we need to be so that they can, because basically we hold the book up for them to read as we're reading. So. Oh yeah, book, let me, let me yeah. grab a book and let me just try it. Yeah. And then my second question was, I saw that you had your headset on. Do you recommend like a earbud setup um, for better audio quality as opposed to just speaking toward your device and then my other question was yeah uh so i have children here at home and they can be kind of noisy um right. would that would that headset set up pick up my voice better and not you know outside the room background noise than just speaking to my toward my device yeah, good question. So before I show like a book example, your microphone question, you're right. So you saw me with a headset and you're correct. A couple things, if you had a, you know, the AirPods or earbuds in or a headset in that you hear, you know, through headphones and it has a microphone to talk. It, yes, definitely that the voice is going to come out a little bit better on the presentation side to the students with a microphone. Um, just know that most of our devices, though, have pretty good microphones. Uh, but you are correct, though. This is real life, right, with distance learning. So there's so many things going on in the homes uh, with you all, with them. Um, that, uh, yeah, a microphone kind of headset, as you saw, would get more of you talking than your background noise um, picked up. But I mean, it's not necessary and this is real life and it's it's happening to all of us, you know, right now with, you know, you know, family members, pets or our kids um, all kind of living in the house <laughs> all at the same time. We're trying to do these things. So I think it's also realistic. It's real life. Just being mindful, I guess, 
letting the household know at this time, you know, as much as they can, you know, uh, professional while you are kind of quiet time while you talk if they can. Um, but yeah, microphone does help, but it's not totally necessary. OK, thanks. Yeah, yeah, let me go back to this. I'll turn on my web camera. So I'm pretty much sitting right in front of the web camera here. And let's see here. So I have a book I grabbed uh, right here. And then let's see, I open up a page. So it's a little tricky, isn't it? But you can you can kind of hold it up. And I'm kind of standing up right now, so I can kind of see from the top level to see the image that you're seeing. So I can kind of hold it kind of close. I think you can read it pretty good. And I could I could even see it if I'm standing up and looking down over it. Along Matthew, comes a clam. Yes. The text that our students will be reading out of most of these books are very enlarged because they're intended to see it from sitting at, in front of you as an audience. So it will be able to be seen. And in programs that have student books where students need to be reading out of their own book, we yes. can um, upload that as a PDF for them to see that page on the screen. Love so it. we've tried it and it works. Yeah, you're right. So in the bottom left corner, the plus sign, you can upload, even though it says upload a presentation, it's pretty much any document. And you're correct, I can get um, any document that I wanted and upload it. And like you said, it could be a PDF of it. And it looks like it's, here it is. And so here it is the document. So you're correct. You could have a live web camera and you could have a PDF document down here as well, which is kind of neat. And they could also have you be full screen instead of just really teeny tiny, and then they would be able to see it really well if you were using a book intended for students to read from. Yeah, you're right. So they, they can click the four-headed arrow. You can say, all right, everyone, let's full screen me <laughs> so click on the four-headed arrow in the corner of my video <laughs> that's right it goes full screen ah <laughs> oh there we go <laughs> good questions i have a question real quick regarding yeah. that so when you're like on the screen they're able to see you live and the PDF file at the same time. Yes, if they okay. don't, if they don't go full screen. Oh, okay. So as long as they stayed in the, once they go, once they make your video full screen, that's all they see at that moment. Okay, so you could use like your live video and then like a whiteboard, right? I think you said there was like a whiteboard we were allowed to use. Yeah. So the yeah. same area. Yeah, this is this is actually a really great question. Um, you you can click, you know, once you load up a file, mm -hmm. you actually have to load up the the whiteboard back. So it's a good question you asked. So you click the plus sign again, go back to where you uploaded this document. Yeah. And it's called the default document. You click the little circle to choose it. Mm -hmm. So you need to load back the default. And then when you click the next slide in the default, you get your blank white slide whiteboard. Oh. So then that would be showing you live and the whiteboard and what we're doing on the whiteboard? Yes, yep, okay. it will. So here, I'll turn on my web camera. All right, class, we're going to look at uh, okay. about the fish um, and he was adding. So we're gonna see two plus two equals Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So when we're doing our presentation, like what we're supposed to be doing with our, with what we're teaching the kids, um, it's possible for us to see all the kids. They won't be able to see each other, but they we can see them. And if we need to hear them respond to the what we're asking all at the same time, do we just unmute all of them? 
Yes, or that's do we right. Just, like push unmute and then mute again because you know I don't want to be hearing what everybody's saying when I'm not asking them the question. Yeah, and so there's that kind of in the classroom idea of the popsicle sticks or mm -hmm. kind of you know you're randomly calling um, equitably. So um, yes, yeah, so you can definitely use this gear here on the left side and mute everyone. And then you can say, all right, Matthew, it's your turn. And then click Matthew's name, the student name, and you'll get a menu to unmute that student at that one moment. But can we meet, unmute all of them? Because what you we're can. Be, that's, I mean, that's how we do it. Yes, yeah, so you may you may unmute them all as well. And then um, and maybe just have a little rules, you know, at the beginning. All right, this is our class meeting rules today. You know, um, take turns, you know, as you answer the questions or kind of give them a little guidance. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Yeah, I think I think I don't know if you've been in some of these in elementary yet or um, but the students, as you probably know, they, they miss you, they miss their teacher, they miss their students, and they're just really excited just to start hearing and chatting and with everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. All right, well, um, I don't know if there's any other questions. Uh, if there are, I'll take them and then I think uh, we'll I'll stay here and then I'll um, I'll stay in the webinar and I'll be here as you try to do these things on your own and I can email you out right now the follow up email with the resources. Any other questions here before I let you try to try this out? I yeah, have, I have one quick oh, question. Oh, sorry. Sure. Okay. Um, what was the site that you said we can do? to like practice on what we're doing right now? Yeah, it's uh, let me go to it. <clears throat> it is. It's called test okay. dot. Big blue button dot org test dot big blue button dot org. Thank you. Yeah, and this is a really neat. I'm really glad they made this. It's kind of a neat little tool just to practice in it. That um, that um, testing site that you just um, talked about, it also shows up at the end, I believe, of um, the Schoology, um, Modesto City Schools or Schoology, I don't know who has it, the, the introduction to Schoology, and then the second one is doing conferences or something like that. I watched it yesterday, and at the end of the conferences, it says ready to try it, you know, do it, you know, whatever. So you click on it, and it's that big blue button thing, and it lets you, like, how do I look like on the camera? Where should I hold it? Like, that exact thing. It's also at the end of one of the, like, tutorials. Oh, that's great, because that's true. You all were, uh, I think... Um, on our district website, we have this staff resource area on the district website. And if you click here to see training resources, I believe you also were starting to do like the Schoology 101s or 102s self-paced modules, I think. Um, if not, this is available to you too, and I'll put that in the follow-up email. So these are some great self-paced tutorials. Uh, how to use Schoology, how to create folders and assignments, how to do a little check for understanding quizzes, how to communicate with students in it. Um, but yes, uh, the communication one, the 104, definitely has conferences in it. Yeah, I think it's at the end of that one where you could uh, try try it live and do all that stuff that you were doing with that big blue button thing. It's I think it's embedded at the end of that. That's awesome. Yeah, they have like self assessments and all that. I kept flunking them, but that's all right. I just went back and redid it because it was like five chances. Or okay. something like that. But yeah, that I found it in there. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. Yeah, definitely take advantage of these. Yeah, I think was it 101 and 104 recommended for you all to try to do? I think. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you haven't got a chance to do those, they're still really good self paced courses. You'll learn a lot in those. All right, I am going to stay here and I'm going to let you all 
uh, keep teams running, keep, keep this up and going, and um, try to go to log into Schoology, create your course, um, and let me know as you try to do some of these things on your own questions. So I'll be here until 12 noon. You can just kind of minimize teams or uh, go on to the Chrome web browser and kind of start going to Schoology.com, logging in, trying things. And I'm here to ask, you know, ask your questions as you're doing it. Um, so I just want to wish you the best. I am going to stay here, ask your questions when you need to. And I'm going to do a follow up email right now. So you all get that in a moment. You're the best, Matthew. Thank you. No, and I i mean, you'll get my email address. Feel free to ask questions even after this. Well, you know, today after 12 noon, you know, feel free at any time always to email and say, hey, how do I do this now? Or, um, or just even questions of what we covered today is fine. I have a quick Matthew? question. Oh, yes. sorry. Uh, about doing our courses. Um, uh, maybe you're you can't answer this, but don't we need a roster of who to add to to do a course and add a conference and all that? I don't. I, at least I don't know if we've been given the rosters. Okay. Uh, so who would it would a teacher have that or that your school site admin? I would imagine our school site admin, like the MTSS coaches that um, created the list of. I emailed you the roster. Okay, so I, I just got an email from someone letting me know that she emailed. So do we just, if they gave us a list, do we just go off of that list and start adding and then create our, our conferences or try? Yeah, exactly. So then once you create your course, um, you can go to members. You can add those members, those students that on your roster. So you can start searching for them, finding them, clicking their names to add them. Uh, so that's one way that you can get the students in that roster that you've been given to get in there. The other way is it's a little bit more work on the parent student side. The other way is you could share that access code. Um, you would have to work with the teacher and the parents though to communicate that. But you could share the access code and then students could go courses, my courses, and join the course. It might be easier just for elementary that you uh, add them if you can. So just in your course, just click members, add members, and see if you can do that. Matthew? Yes. In the chat, someone's asking if you can review how to um, upload a PDF again into the into the conferences tool like that's what one. it seems like yes okay yeah so when that's a good question when you're in the conferences and you want to upload a, a document or a pdf or a powerpoint um in the bottom left hand corner click the plus button and then you're going to click upload a presentation from here, you're going to click right here, this kind of dotted square to find those files. The file has to be on your computer device, though. So it has to be on your downloads folder or your hard drive of that computer. So you click on it, and then you choose the location uh, where it's at. And then once you chose your file, you'll click open, and it's going to upload it. It seems to like PDFs the best. They seem to load up the fastest, but it can upload a PowerPoint or Word document. And then once you're ready, you just click Upload. And then it's going to upload it. it. Takes a moment. And then it's going to show up right when it uploads. It's going to go live into the conference. And here it is. Now you have a, at the bottom, you have a zoom button. So you have a plus or minus sign so you can zoom out if you like. And then you have your all your annotation tools still uh, that you have here. So you can annotate on it now, uh, which is pretty cool. The only trick here, if you want to get back to that whiteboard screen, you would need to go back down to the plus button in the bottom left. 
click upload presentation again, and you just need to click the circle to the default listing here and confirm it. And then you'll get back to your whiteboard. 